Question 10, how do you find the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B? And how do you find the volume of the parallel pipe determined by A, B, and C? Well, this is, we already included this in the useful properties uh, and so on. So we'll just repeat that again. So area of, the, of a parallelogram solution to A is the, uh, this right here, is the length of the cross product of its two vector, yeah, of its two vectors. So the area of parallelogram is equal to the length of the A times the by the uh, length of B times sine theta, which is equals to the cross product, the length of the cross product, A cross B, like that, A and B. And the length of the cross product A cross B is equal to the area of the parallelogram determined by A and B. And then solution to B. And B states, uh, the volume of a parallel pipe is de determined by the magnitude of the, of the scalar triple product. Yeah, that's what you would uh, call a scalar triple product, which you have the dot product and the cross product. So dot product gives a scalar, uh, cross product gives a vector, but then you have vector dot product, you're gonna get a scale. And uh, interesting, uh, yes, they call it vector triple product. So there's the uh, one we already covered. So V equal to area of parallelogram times by height H, which equals to the length of the cross product B cross C times by length of A times uh, the absolute value of cosine theta. And you get this scalar triple product and it's gonna be the absolute value or the length of the uh, dot product with the Cross product, <laughs> epic stuff there. And, and the volume of the parallel pipe determined vector vectors B, A, B, and C is the magnitude of their scalar triple product. Again, screenshot from my calculus book. So V equals A, yeah, uh, the length of the A dot uh, BX, B cross C. And uh, note that uh, it's called scalar triple product because uh, the result gives a scalar or just a number as opposed to the uh, cross product which just gives a perpendicular vector. And also here is the determinant form of this uh, triple product and it's uh, and you could write it exactly the same way as with a cross product but instead of the uh, standard basis vectors uh, I, J, K, you could just use A1, A2, A3, and then it's exactly the same thing, but you get a, a scalar as opposed to a uh, vector here. If I scroll back up, yeah, if I scroll back up over here, so if you had a, a determinant of order two is just like this, so you have A times D minus B uh, times C. So in other words, you have this cross uh, uh, multiplication and subtraction there, but then with the cross product, you have, uh, this is gonna be I, J, K there. Uh, so you get these vectors. So these gives uh, vectors. You can't just uh, you you, know, you can't add them up. They're go, they're going to be for the i j over the x y and z axis. Yeah. So if I just uh, teleport back here, so this one here you can actually add and subtract all this. So again, you can uh, just a reminder you can calculate it like this. Cross these out, and then you're going to get left with uh, this uh, square right there. B C three, and then you have, uh, B B two B B three C two C three. So like this, and then you would multiply uh, this and then subtract it. And then, then subtract these from it, so B3, C2. And then the next one's going to be minus, just so you do the same thing. And then you would cross this out, you cross this out, cross this, and now you're going to have uh, the square composing of this B1, B3, B1, B3, and then C1, C3. And then you would, uh, as a subtraction, then you would multiply uh, B1 times C3, then minus B3 times C1. And then lastly, uh, this one here, you're going to cross this out, and now you're left with this uh, square right there. So B1, B2, C1, C2, and then do the same thing. Multiply, subtract between these two. All right, epic stuff.